Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. This is part one of three in our series to configure OpenBSD as a firewall. So in this part, this is just our introduction. We're going to talk about the concepts surrounding this and how our network will look. So essentially, we're going to start up here. We're going to have an internet service provider and through them, we're just you know going to lease an internet connection. And that link, whether it is a cable modem, DSL modem, you know, fiber, satellite, etc., is our internet connection. And that comes in to one of our ports on our machine that is running OpenBSD. Now, that port and the internet connection is going to be our WAN, or our wide area network. Okay? And this is the public side. This is what our firewall is segmenting us from and protecting us. So um, we also need a private side. And that's what the local area network is. All right, This is where we put all of our devices. This is the trusted side of our OpenBSD firewall. Okay. Now, before we move on any further, when I say firewall, I am also referring to the functions of routing as well. Now, there's slight overlap because OpenBSD is performing firewalling and routing functions. Okay, And that's why when I say firewall, I'm using the terms interchangeably. So there's no confusion on the next few slides. Now, if PC1 here wants to talk to PC2, since they're in the same network and or broadcast domain, they can just ARP for each other's MAC addresses and send the packet directly through the switch. That's fine. And that works great. But if we want to talk outside of our network we're in, we need to do a few more steps. So if PC2 wants to get out to Google.com, first thing it needs to know is what is the OpenBSD's um, LAN IP address, okay? It gets that, in our case, with DHCP on the LAN side, but it needs to know that IP address's MAC address, or Media Access Control address. To, do, to figure that out, it sends an ARP request up to into the network. The switch will flood it, and OpenBSD is going to get that ARP request. It's going to know it's for itself and send an ARP reply back down to PC2. And PC2 is going to put that info into its ARP cache. Now, at that point, it can then send a DNS query out, and OPSD will forward that to the internet, and back. Then, he has Google's IP address. And now, at that point, it will go ahead and <coughs> send the packet up here. The switch is going to get it and forward it up to the OpenBSD machine. Once OpenBSD gets it, that's when we're going to have some processing happen on OpenBSD. Now, for the <coughs> the um, confines of our discussion, there's two types of IPv4 addresses. There's public and private. Now, the public ones are routable on the internet. So any routers up at our ISP or any other network on the internet will accept packets with a source address that is a public IP, okay? Um, the private side is our LAN side, okay? And this is what OpenBSD is going to do. It's going to take our original address, PC2, because remember, when PC2 sent that packet, at layer 3, the source IP address is 192.168.1.3, and at layer 2, the source MAC address is PC2's MAC, but the destination MAC address, because of ARP, is OpenBSD's LAN interface. All right. Now, when OpenBSD process, processes the packet, the original source is going to be 192.168.13, which is a private address that's assigned to PC2. All right. What we have to do is change that address to be the one public address on our WAN interface of OpenBSD. All right. Our ISP usually just gives us one public IP address, but that is why 
we need to change it so it's routable. So we're going to take the source of 192.168.13 and OpenBSD is going to switch that source and rewrite it to be 192.168.0.25. So in effect, all the PCs behind here on the LAN are sharing the 192.168.0.25 address. Okay? So, um, a quick note. <clears throat> Mine are private because I already have a firewall in place and in the lab network we're using that's attached to my existing network. So that's why this is private but the NAT concepts and how we implement this will not change ver in lab versus production. It will be 100% the same. So after we've changed the source address of the packet we have to look at where our best route is to send that packet. To do that we look at the packet's destination address and we're gonna compare that against entries in our routing table. The routing table holds all of the networks we know about and also the the best route to those networks. Now in most internet connections if we'll have we'll get it one of two ways we can either get our address with DHCP, so Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. In that case, our default um, gateway, or our default static route, will be part of the DHCP information. And that will be our route for all traffic that isn't destined directly to our 192.168.0.0/24 network, which is our WAN, or destined to our 192.168.1.0.24 network. As long as it's not destined to those two, the rest of the traffic will just go straight out to the ISP. Okay. Now th that's what's called default. It it just grabs all traffic that there isn't a more specific route for. But um, that's what that's gonna do. And if we just set it statically, we just set a default route as well. But that's besides the point. Regardless, we have a default static route. We're gonna compare the destination address, and then once we find the route we need. We're going to go ahead and select that best route, and we're going to send the packet out of our WAN. All right. So now, when the packet comes back from Google.com, the source will be Google.com's IP address, but the NAT is going to work in in reverse, and NAT stands for Network Address Translation. The destination is 192.168.0.25. We're going to actually now rewrite the destination to be 192.168.1.3, part of that state information. And it's going to send that traffic. It'll do that route table lookup once again for the destination. But this time, it's going to see if the LAN network is the best match. So instead of sending it out the WAN, we would send it out the LAN. And then it would go back to PC2. And then we have complete connectivity at that point. Now, one last thing as well, um, that was the routing functions and NAT that OpenBSD will do. But as far as the filtering goes, we're going to configure OpenBSD so it lets LAN traffic, traffic that's sourced from the LAN, go out of the WAN just fine. It's going to make state for that traffic, and then when it comes back on the WAN, even though there will be no rules to let it in on the WAN, it has state so it can send that traffic back through because it's it's part of an existing connection that's been started from the LAN. The WAN though, if there's any traffic we're not expecting, it will just be dropped. So that will be our default policy we're going to use. So that is how our network looks and how OpenBSD will do its functions for us. So the, again, this was part one of three in our series to configure OpenBSD as a firewall. I'm Tyler with T-Tech. I really hope you enjoyed this introduction, and I will see you in part two. Have a nice day.